After the second Democratic debate, when Tulsi Gabbard exposed Kamala Harris's atrocious criminal justice record, her numbers have in fact been steadily declining, and you'd think that her campaign would currently be scrambling to figure out a way to help her recover, but it seems like they're not doing that, and Kamala's own actions have made matters exponentially worse, because at a time when they should be trying to win voters back, it seems like she's going out of her way to prove to voters that she's not with them. So for example, CNN will be hosting a climate change town hall on September 4th, and it's going to feature eight presidential candidates. However, Kamala Harris will be conspicuously absent. Why? Well, because there is a supposed scheduling conflict here. Now, the question is, what could possibly be more important for a presidential candidate than being on national television talking about climate change. I mean, this is how you get the word out. This is how you show people that you're serious and you're taking this issue seriously and you have a plan. So what's more important than getting that national screen time? Well, according to ABC News reporter Zoreen, Senator Kamala Harris's top bundlers are hosting fundraisers for her in downtown LA and Hancock Park. Those fundraisers directly conflict with CNN's climate crisis town hall, which Harris is not attending. So in other words, it's full on mask off. She knows she's not going to win over Bernie Sanders' progressive voters and not even Elizabeth Warren's progressive voters. So she probably figured, look, it really makes no sense to maintain this progressive facade when they don't trust me because I've done too many things that prove otherwise that I'm not progressive. And I know I need money to win, so I might as well just be the centrist that I am, embrace that persona, and attend these fundraisers in the Hamptons, because that's really what I feel I need to do to win. Money is more important right now than courting voters and proving that I am the real deal. That's essentially what's happening here. I mean, <laughs> to ditch a CNN town hall where they're talking about climate change for a fundraiser? I would be embarrassed if I were working on the uh, Kamala Harris campaign because that is not a good look. The optics are terrible. And this is not the first time that she has attended a private fundraiser with lots of rich people and elites. Because as Bloomberg reports, Teslas and Maseratis lined the street as Kamala Harris greeted guests sipping drinks from plastic cups with her name on them and eating cinnamon sugar donuts from Dreesen's at a fundraiser hosted by movie executive Jamie Patrickoff and his wife Kelly as the summer of Democratic fundraisers rolled on in East Hampton. She also had events on Martha's Vineyard, the Massachusetts island that is a playground for celebrities including the Obamas, Bill Clinton, and David Letterman on Friday and Saturday. Tickets range from $100 to $2,800. I believe in capitalism, but capitalism is not working for most people, Harris said on the patio steps of the Patrikoff house, looking out at a peach orchard among flower and herb beds. She said she recognized people who have become successful by working hard and following the rules, but that the middle class needs help. So let's all contextualize this. Kamala Harris at a rich person's house at a private fundraiser is telling everyone that she believes in capitalism. <laughs> it's like she doesn't want to win. I mean, you're running in the Democratic Party primary. I mean, most strategists will tell you that the pivot doesn't come until after you win the nomination. But I mean, she's already straight up just pivoting. Embarrassing. Absolutely embarrassing. And the irony here is that this fundraiser demonstrates exactly why she shouldn't believe in capitalism. The fact that she feels the need to hang out with rich people to raise money to win an election demonstrates how capitalism has corrupted our entire political process. And basically, her argument would be, well, look, we just have to change the rules. The rules favor elites, so let's change the rules. Except the problem is that capitalism is a virus. It attacks everything that gets in its way. So if you change the rules... Capitalism will attack the rules and get them undone. That's how capitalism works. So, I mean, Kamala Harris, I, I just, I don't understand. This is a horrible campaign. Like, I clearly overestimated her in the beginning because, you know, it's clear she's someone who's incredibly charismatic. She seemed more politically astute than her predecessors in the Democratic Party, namely, you know, Joe Biden, Hillary Clinton. But this is just such a bad move. It's such a bad look. And I don't know why she's doing this. Now, to be fair to Kamala Harris, there are other candidates like Pete Buttigieg and Joe Biden who are also doing fundraisers in the Hamptons. But 
you're going to get a lot more attention if you're literally ditching a seat in town hall on climate change to hang out with your donors. That's just, that's not a good look. And at these private meetings with rich people, what is she doing? Well, she's also attacking progressive policy proposals. Harris, again, tried to clarify her stance on health care, a topic that tripped her up in the early Democratic debates. I have not been comfortable with Bernie's plan, she said, of Sanders' Medicare for All proposal, which she signed on as a co-sponsor when it was introduced. She explained how a Harris administration would leave room for private insurance. So, first of all, after supporting this legislation for two straight years and reiterating her support when it was obvious she was wavering, she's now saying, I don't really feel comfortable with it. And second of all, she's essentially admitting that she wants to water down Medicare for all. That's what her own pseudo Medicare for all bill does. Because in order to preserve a role for private insurance companies, well, Adam Gaffney, who is the president of Physicians for a National Health Program, who is the doctor, mind you, that literally helped Pramila Jayapal write the House version of Medicare for All, he put it best in an op-ed for the nation. And he says that if you advocate for Medicare for All, you shouldn't try to actively carve out a role for private healthcare profiteers because the only way to make room for a significant role for private insurance in the American context is to make the public system paltrier or skimpier, to impose onerous copays and deductibles, or to let the rich preferentially displace working class people from hospital beds and doctor's offices. But it doesn't seem to make sense to punch holes in your own floor just to create work for a carpenter. That is particularly true true if your floor is your healthcare and your carpenter is an extractive insurance giant. In other words, any politician who says that there should be duplicative, supplementary, or complementary private insurance companies in our Medicare for All system, they're saying, they're admitting essentially, I want to water down Medicare for All so we can preserve a role for them. That's literally what Kamala Harris's bill does. That's literally what she admitted to here at this private fundraiser. Now, since she took a shot at Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill, he took a direct shot at her and exposed her for the fraud that she is. He tweeted out, I don't go to the Hamptons to raise money from billionaires. If I ever visited there, I would tell them the same thing I have said for the last 30 years. We must pass a Medicare for All system to guarantee affordable health care for all, not just for those who can afford it. And that right there is what I'd like to call a KO. Because what he's saying is, Kamala Harris says one thing on television and then behind closed doors at these private fundraisers in the Hamptons, she's saying something else. Well, you know, Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All bill, which I claimed publicly to support over the past two years and reiterated my support for it time and again, it actually makes me feel uncomfortable. He's saying, I've been saying the same thing and I would say the same thing to rich people that I say on national television. Now, again, I want to stress that it's not just Kamala Harris. I mean, Cory Booker, that same weekend, attended an event, a private fundraiser at Bon Jovi's house. You've got Pete Buttigieg and Joe Biden also attending private fundraisers in the Hamptons. There's one candidate who is choosing to be principled, and it's Bernie Sanders. Now, to be fair, um, Elizabeth Warren and Tulsi Gabbard, they also don't attend these private fundraisers, although Elizabeth Warren, she said if she wins the nomination... All bets are off. She's going to go all in and she's not going to unilaterally disarm. So if you truly want a candidate who's uncorrupted, who won't attend these private fundraisers where these politicians make different promises to rich people and elites behind closed doors than they'll make to you in public, well, you know who to vote for. Bernie Sanders is the one candidate with the shot of winning that's uncorrupted, that's principled, and who will actually fight for the policies he's been advocating for for decades. It's just no contest. It's a no-brainer. If you truly believe in Medicare for All, you do not vote for Kamala Harris. You vote for the candidate who's been talking about Medicare for All for decades. It's Bernie Sanders. 